what is a biofilm? Let me pull up a little little picture image for you guys so you can see or better understand. So biofilms out of the gate, right? They are known as EPS for short, extracellular polymeric substances. So what this is, 90% of it is essentially polysaccharides. That just means sugar, proteins, nucleic acids. And some even say, you know, there's bacteria, there's yeast, there's other types of microbes that are part of this EPS matrix. And you can see right here, here's the different EPSs right here. You can see there's different sanctuaries where a lot of these guys grow, they develop. And think of this as almost like a slime. Um, in other words, like everyone has that, you know, experience of cooking some bacon and then a little bit of bacon grease gets on the counter. If you just use a paper towel to wipe it up, you feel that kind of grease on there. Even after you wipe it, you can feel it. It's kind of slimy. This is what biofilms are. They're kind of like this residual slime. And this little EPS matrix is very resistant to antibiotics. There's some data showing that antibiotics are anywhere between 10 to 100 to even 1,000 times less effective when you have biofilms protecting some of these areas. And I even know too, um, my mother who's an orthopedic slash emergency room slash um, operating room nurse from, for I think 40, 50, 50 years now, so a very long time half a century. It's kind of crazy to think about it like that. And she works in a lot of uh, orthopedic surgery cases and they have this, um, the cellophane they actually put over the joint. It's a silver solution. It's a silver cellophane and they wrap the joint and they do that for, because of antibiotic resistance in, in bacteria. And part of what silver is known in the in scientific literature is actually to help with biofilms. And so part of the reason why we may have antibiotic resistant bacteria is because of biofilms. And so right here, they use these silver biofilms and wound resistance, right? I mean, this is, you know, it's actually now common in surgical centers to actually use these type of things, which is kind of interesting, right? Because you hear about it, you see it, but then is it actually trickling down into mainstream? And it is, it is, which is really great. So this kind of gives you an idea what biofilms are look like, how they grow, how they develop. Now, a couple of articles here I wanted to highlight out of the gate. So you can see here, you can have biofilms in the mouth all the way down into the esophagus. There's actually a strong association with H. pylori in biofilms and a strong association even biofilms in the esophagus. I wanted to just show one part here to you guys. I think this is really interesting. One of the nutrients that we'll use, we'll use a nutrient called acetylcysteine, which is a very powerful compound. It's a precursor to glutathione, which is, which is really important. Um, glutathione is a powerful antioxidant. It also helps with lung inflammation. Uh, it actually helps with pseudocatalase, which is a glutathione-based enzyme for lung inflammation, uh, which is very, very, very helpful. All right, let me just show you here. <clears throat> so right here, Historically, the stomach was thought to be a sterile environment. The discovery of H. pylori colonization dramatically altered the belief. More recently, sensitive molecular techniques have identified the presence of diverse populations, 128 phylotypes of bacteria. So really interesting. Uh, and when you look at this one article, I want to find this one part here. So in significant proportion of the population, the gastric mucosa is colonized by H. pylori. And there was one part in here where they talked about N. acetylcysteine being incredibly helpful. I'll, uh, here it is right here. Recently, a study on biofilm trapping compounds, NAC, has demonstrated the importance of biofilm phenotype in H. pylori. So in this one study right here, H. pylori, they had 40 patients that had failed previous H. pylori therapy. So they actually did antibiotics. They failed. So 100% failure rate. These patients were randomized to receive one week of treatment with NAC or placebo. 13 of the 20 patients, 65% who received the NAC cleared their infection, while only four in the placebo group that got nothing. So that's a huge increase. I mean, that's, you know, three and a half X above the placebo. So you always want to compare placebo to it because there's power in the mind. So 10 of those who successfully eradicated their H. pylori infection agreed to, to a follow-up endoscopy. And, and these patients, um, SCM, I look what that means, SCM, I think it may be uh, show disappeared. It's, I think it's an inflammatory um, condition. Disappeared in all the biofilms and all. While this exciting finding should be confirmed in larger studies, they suggest that the biofilm phenotype plays an important role in human GI infections and provides the first evidence that biofilms di directed therapy can be successful for GI diseases.